Welcome, guys, to an episode um, which might be my favorite of the season because my favorite thing to do in life is to eat and to talk about food. And I get to do that today, so it's very exciting. We have Aditi Dugar, who is the owner of Mask, a fine dining modern Indian restaurant in Bombay. She is also the founder and owner of Urban Gourmet, which owns many amazing food businesses in India. Aditi, thank you for being here. I'm Thank super you. excited. I'm super excited yeah. to be chatting with you. Me too, me too. So when I first came to Mask a few years ago, I was very taken aback with how beautiful the restaurant is. And I was kind of transported. I felt like I could have been in New York, Barcelona, like anywhere. It felt like it was very international. Was, that was intentional? I think that, uh, I mean, of course, it's Ashish Shah to thank here. But, yeah, he's uh, very good at restaurants. Yeah. I've, I think all his restaurants are beautiful. Ashish Shah is the interior decorator who made this so beautiful. I think uh, Ashish has done an amazing job in translating the experience we wanted to offer our diners where Really, mask is an experience. I think that's what we set out to do eight years ago. It is the only tasting menu restaurant in the country where, you know, the chefs come and explain every course and take you on this journey of, you know, ingredients and stories through India. Fine dining is like an ultimate luxury, right? So what is modern Indian cuisine? How we look at modern Indian cuisine is that, A, you know, Indian cuisine is so vast right. and like, not everything is even documented, you know. Exactly. You know, the food in your house is different from my house, and even the dals can taste different. There are so millions, many, of millions of kinds of dals. Millions yeah. of recipes, and yeah. everybody has millions of versions yeah. of, you know, what their home food is really defined as their Indian food as yeah. well. At Mask, we're not interpreting the dish as, you know, not just taking a pani puri and making, making it a modern pani puri, like with foam. Like, we're not doing anything molecular here and calling it modern. And uh, what we we are doing in our kitchen is really turning the dish on its head and creating our own language of modern Indian food, which is also could be globally inspired by different techniques and our travels and exchange of ideas. Is that how you've stayed relevant for eight years? Could you keep um, traveling and being inspired and changing your menu? And that's why people come back because they have new things to try. Also, we need to be very excited about what we're doing. Yeah. And for us, it is the R&D that is always exciting for us. So I think that as long as we stay relevant in our head, you know, we that's the experience that we're sort of giving to our diners is yeah. that we're yeah. always going to be relevant. Yeah, and oh. the menu and mass changes according to the season, so every three or four months. It's all fresh, seasonal. It's all fresh and yeah, seasonal. That's probably yes. the best way to eat anyway. Yes. You do really exciting things. You did a collaboration with Rosewood Hong Kong. Rosewood is a group of hotels. Um, you did a pop-up there. I remember during COVID, you did these gourmet burgers, and you told people on your in, on your Instagram and that you, they can come and grab the burger from outside in their car and go home. You guys keep doing these really fun, exciting things, right? How do you come up with this? I mean, it takes a village to build anything. And yeah. I think that each one in the team has a lot of value to add here. And what we've created here is really a platform. And like you mentioned before, is that everybody is allowed that freedom of thought and, you know, is really that's kind of the team culture as well. Yeah. So everybody has like great ideas and like we're ready to experiment and explore with anything that sounds amazing and yeah. that could offer something new to a customer or a diner. I saw on your Instagram, you did a, a omakasi pizza. It just sounds really fancy for me. Um, what is an omakasi pizza? You know, when we travel, we also connect with lots of like-minded people and yeah. Daniel Quesson of uh, Mandarin Oriental in uh, in Tokyo is one such person who is running an omakase restaurant pizza in Tokyo. In Tokyo. Mm. And trust me, you don't go to Tokyo to eat pizza, but really you land up like it's a huge wait list to eat pizza at the pizza bar on the 38th. And it is one of the best pizzas I've eaten in my life as well. So we, when we, you know, kind of spoke to him about our concept, and of course, you know, we know him through the 50 Best community as well. Uh, we really hit it off and he invited us to come cook at the Mandarin Oriental and Varun just went a few weeks ago and it was an omakase, like a pizza tasting menu. And he did like a, one of his pizzas went like viral across, uh, you know, that during that collab and all the diners were talking about it was a gora masala pizza. 
And in fact, Daniel, Chef Daniel has still kept it on the menu. What's a yeah. Gora masala? It's like a Maharashtrian masala. That's so fun. Yeah. Amazing. And, and he yeah. still kept that on the menu because people couldn't stop talking about it. Mask is a part of the 50 best restaurants in the world. We're number one in India three years in a row on Asia's 50 best list. Amazing. And we just debuted on the world's list at number 78. Congratulations. Thank That's you. That's huge. I mean, Thank because you. the restaurant business is very competitive. It is very difficult, I'm sure. It's not an easy business to be in. So that's a huge, huge achievement. Yes, it is. It is amazing. And it's been a tough journey. Has this recognition changed things for you at the restaurant? Has it opened doors for you in terms of collaborations, like you said, in Japan? Or has it um, increased the number of people who seek the restaurant out when they travel to Bombay? In the restaurant world, people look at Michelin. And Michelin, sadly, isn't hasn't come to India. Right. So, you know, for us... 50 best also is a is a massive uh, you know accolade to for the restaurant to receive because yeah. it's also got a global standing and like world over foodies yeah. diners tourists looking up restaurants to go to in a city are looking at these and lists. They look at these lists. And they look at these lists. They look sometimes. at these recommendations. Somebody's done the job for exactly. you to find the best. You know, people are following these people who are traveling all over the globe to eat. I mean, literally, it's their job it's to just job, huh? <laughs> to dine and to eat. Yeah. And since you said you love to eat, maybe it should be yours as well. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I pay to eat. So maybe somebody can pay me and I can eat for them. Yeah. But you know what? My palate is too basic. I'm telling you. Like, I'll never... I could do like a... Like a simple home cooked or basic restaurant list. I could do that. Because I like a love a great grilled cheese sandwich or amazing rice and dal. I could rate that for sure. <laughs> you, you need know? to come check out yeah. 27 Bakehouse. Yeah. Pizza okay, and okay. Bakes. Now, speaking <laughs> of this, let's talk about your other businesses in the food industry. Aside from Mask, which is in Bombay and Shakti Mills, what else are you doing? You're doing a lot more in the food industry, right? My journey started with the catering business called Sage and Saffron, which is a boutique catering business yeah. in the city. But also we cater across India and internationally. Uh, and uh, it's, it's highly curated because no two events are ever the same. Uh, then we also have a bakery brand called 27 Bakehouse, which now we've also extended to Pizza, which just opened about three and a half weeks ago. Oh, wow. And it's, it's really been a rage. And it's, the, it's, I think, a true New York style uh, pizza, which is a new offering in the city as well. Yeah. So how are you doing all this? You have three, four different food businesses. You're a mom of how many? Three. Three kids. <laughs> Amazing. And you're tra you travel. You do pretty much everything. I have also bumped into her at yoga. So <laughs> how are you doing everything? It's, it's a lot. I mean, a lot of people complain. I have to apologize 50 times a day as well because I, I, I don't know how to say no most of the time. Yeah, so yeah. I'm always committing to things yeah. and then not showing up. Yeah. The well, intention I'm, is there. The intention is yeah. definitely there. But then I get caught up with... So much going on and it's a lot to catch up with between the kids and work and family commitments. Like, you know, I also have my in-laws and parents that live very close to me. So it's it's a lot. And I have a big family. Yeah. So yeah. I manage because I have a great support system. I think that's even key. at home that's and key. even at work. Yeah. So I can't disregard yeah. that at no, all. No, but I'll speak like for I myself. Like, I collapse without yeah. that. I have this guilt. Um, actually, I don't do that much work, but even the limited amount of work I've been doing since I've been a mom, um, there's a guilt factor related to it, right? How do you manage that guilt factor? I'm just asking for myself. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm never guilty. You're not guilty. Like, no. Yeah, actually, I think you're not I'm really? never guilty. Never. Because I think hard. that when you're guilty, your, your kids can see it, everybody can see it. Yeah. So I do things with a very, like, you know, I'm very positive about everything. Yeah. And I do it because I love it. And in fact, I feel like my kids have over the years really looked up to me. Like if I'm at home, be overextended my stay at home, my kids will be like, mom, why aren't you at a meeting? <laughs> like, why are you going to work? Like you're, yeah. you know, you need to do stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. like if they see me sleeping in, they're like, they'll come wake me up and be like, mom, get to work, you know? That's so, so cute. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're so a good example. Yeah, yeah, and it's, they're all like part of this and they're all invested in, in my success. That's amazing. Amazing, amazing. Everything in the food industry, especially with fine dining, um, you see that people are coming and actually spending a lot of their money and experiences and on food and on alcohol while they're eating the food. I guess Bombay is the best place to have a fine dining restaurant because the maximum amount of billionaires mm -hmm. in India, and I think maybe in Asia also, 
India for sure, are in Bombay. So do you see that? Do you see Bombay as opposed to other Indian cities where people are spending a lot of money on food? I know in Delhi, they love to eat and drink as well. Yes. But is Bombay like the main market for that? Do you see people really spending? I think it's a market where because there are this, it's such a cosmopolitan city yeah. that I think people are open to experimentation a lot more mm. than other cities. Mm. It's not like the other cities aren't spending as much. Yeah. In fact, like sometimes when we go do events in like, you know, B and C tier cities, it's like we're blown away with the amount of like, money that people spend. Yeah. But I think that in Bombay, that any idea you present, they're, they're open, open they're, they're just open to accepting and more, more open to experimentation. Yeah. Would you open a fine dining restaurant like this in other cities, like a Delhi or Hyderabad, where they love to eat and drink? I mean, I've been chased for years, yeah. but I think that as a personal capacity, I wouldn't do it because like, I just don't have the time. And I think food is such a business that you really need to be invested, you need to have that passion to build yeah. a good food business. And you really need to have years to the ground, you know, unless you have great operating right. partners day -day and day-to-day partners. Day -day partners yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult to, uh, to manage. Okay, let's discuss this. What does it take to build an amazing food experience restaurant in India? To build a great brand, I think that you really need to listen to your audience. Mm -hmm. And it's important that, you know, by listening to your audience, you're able to pivot in those ideas. Right. And if you're too far away from, you know, that reality, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult to grow a brand. From the time when you had the idea of Mask until it actually launched and became like a, like a business, how long did that take? Well, Mask was built over 18 months where we really traveled across the country for about 18 months while the restaurant was being built up from ground zero. I think from the very beginning, we were kind of operationally profitable because, you know, we were only a tasting menu restaurant. So we, we didn't have a lot of wastage. We would only cook for the number of diners or the reservations we had on hand. But the kind of money that we'd invested into the infrastructure yeah. and also the kind of global brand that we wanted to build, it was a big burn for the first few years. Yeah. I would say that, you know, it is now a proper business vertical only the last three years. I guess it takes that much time. It but you know, 18 months, to set up an 18 months, sometimes small flats take longer. Yeah. That's an amazing uh, That's a long time. Really? The restaurants are months? usually set up in like not more than 90 days. Oh, 120 really? Months, I didn't know that. Days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I mean, the rents are crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you, you want to like about, get up yeah. quickly because you're paying the rent. Yeah, yeah. Rent, salaries, yeah. like everything was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It's all the overheads, yeah, right? That keep pushing you that let me do this fast. Now to think about it, like I couldn't repeat those mistakes. Yeah, you live and you learn, right? Yes. Um, what's the biggest challenge in owning a restaurant, a fine dining restaurant in Bombay? You have to be a generous entrepreneur. Like I think being in hospitality, if you do not have that sense of generosity mm. and larger than life sort of uh, attitude towards your guests and your patrons. Now we've been in the industry for 12 years. Like, you know, people know us, oh, you've built the best restaurant in India, etc. We you know we've opened a pizza place. Now that's talking to such a wider audience. Different audience. And a different audience. Yeah. We're learning every day. Yeah. And it's, it's not a, it's a small ticket price compared to what you're paying at Mask. But, you know, it's the same sort of experience you want to give to the guests. Yeah. And if something doesn't go right, like we are... You know, we'd, we'd, you know, comp the bill or like we'd want to like yeah. overcompensate. And that's, that's really the attitude and it's in our DNA. And yeah. I don't think if you don't have that in your DNA, you're in the wrong business. But then you shouldn't be in hospitality. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But tell me a crazy story. Have you had a really like funny or crazy incident where a client has come and something funny has happened? Because all kinds of things happen, right? In a client related business. The craziest things have happened. Like, yeah. you know, we've had people like, throw up at the restaurant or really like, like on the table yeah sometimes like they've you know like they've they've not realized like They're how <laughs> uh strong like you know their drinks have been or like they've they've signed up for a cocktail pairing and wanted to experiment with the wine pairing at the same time and they've oh gone overboard God. we had a himalayan rock salt in our kitchen as soon as you enter the the kitchen and one of the courses happened in the kitchen and we had a chef like a top chef last year come to collaborate with us and he was just like oh my god what is this salt it was very funny it was chef daniel hum yeah. and like all the whole team challenged him to lick the salt and he actually licked that salt that was probably touched by 
like thousands and thousands of diners. It oh was, and that, it went viral on TikTok. But he was TikTok. okay, he didn't get sick or anything? <laughs> he didn't get sick. But I mean, like we've had yeah. so many like just, just diners that yeah. have been, it's been hilarious. Like a diner once called in saying that, you know, they were very sick after the meal, you know, like some something and like they blamed it on the restaurant. And like, I mean, we take so much care in really putting up this meal with so much love and yeah. heart and, yeah. and thought. And it's, it's so carefully produced that it could have been something else. But of course, you know, we're not going to... You never know. You yeah. never know, yeah. right? Yeah. And like something may not have suited you, you know, because we do use some pickles or ferments in our menu as well. Sometimes like something may not suit you. And, and then we were like, oh, but, you know, we'd love to host you back and you can bring your whole family together and come for a meal. And, like, you know, they accepted immediately. Yeah. So you never know. They might be just doing it for a free meal. No, you know? no, no. I don't think it's always for a free meal. But, know. like, yeah. I think that sometimes it's, it's really amazing to see how you can also change a diner's experience. Yeah. Like, if they've had, if they felt like they had something go wrong at the restaurant, but if you... You know, you can turn it around, you can turn and, make it it around it and make it a very positive experience. That's key, though. That's yeah. the key for hospitality. Yeah. So you clearly so, get hospitality yeah. <laughs> very well. Yeah, yeah. So it's I, I think that sometimes even the funny stories become yeah. memorable stories. I know your menu does change like every season. I know that, you know, you try new things. But has there been a dish where people come back and then suddenly it's not on the menu and they're like, oh my God, I came to eat this. So yes. that happens to me sometimes. It happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I think in yeah. every every menu of masks, they'll be like, diners will come back and they'll be yeah. like, oh my God, can we have this from your previous yeah. menu? And, yeah. Oh, yeah. why did this go off the menu? Yeah. This should be like a mask, like signature, never yeah. go off any, any of the menus. Yeah. And yesterday we were doing a tasting because we we're curating an event for somebody's big occasion. And we they wanted us to do like the best of masks. But we've done over 600 dishes over the last eight years or even more. And we were like, we don't know how to do the best yeah, of masks. Yeah. Like we put together even 30 dishes yeah. and they were still remembering dishes that they've eaten and like, like oh my God, can, when, you, can yeah. you also do this? But I think that in the last few menus at least, what's really stayed is the cacao dessert. Cacao and, dessert? Yeah, which is truly iconic and I hope Varun does that. Can you, can you explain that. it to me? Like, like what is it? What so is it, it is when we started this journey of the restaurant and we went to discover ingredients or find ingredients across India, we discovered Mason and Chocolate, which is a homegrown cacao brand from Pondicherry. Ah. Back then, like nine years ago, they were not even making any wholesale or B2B bars, only retail packs, supplying only to like a community yeah. in yeah. Pondicherry. And we discovered them and like really urged and pursued them to come supply to our restaurant, spoke about our concept, and they were really blown away. And we were the first restaurant that they ever sent a B2B bar to. Okay. And now like they're the, you know, really iconic brand from India, you know, making chocolate bars. We've kind of paid respect to, you know, that discovery and like made a whole course on cacao because Indian cacao is also having its moment. Yeah, and I didn't, and I didn't like, know Indian cacao was amazing. Like, and it's like we do be, yeah. something which is everything chocolate. Yeah. Like it's like we use the cacao shell yeah. as the container for the dessert. Yeah. And then we use the cacao fruit. We use the nibs inside. We make a chicky out of the nibs. We do a cacao mousse, a cacao chip, and a chocolate and that's ice cream. The whole dessert, on and a that's plate. the whole dessert on Ooh, the plate. And for a chocolate lover, that's yeah. like really exciting. And that has yeah. stayed because yeah. I think like people were really like almost having an orgasm on the table <laughs> when they were eating that dessert. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Varun has done that in many iterations and it's, it's yeah. kind of become an iconic dessert on the menu. Another thing is that, you know, it's okay. Like somebody who comes to a fine dining restaurant could have a lot of money, but no matter who that person is, nobody wants to waste their money. Yes. So isn't it amazing to see that someone feels like they got their money's worth. That's the service style at Mask. It's really that yeah. it's not a fussy fine dining. It's yeah. not like white tablecloth. And, yeah. you know, it's not it's not fussy. It is that, you know, we are in India and we want to embody that spirit of being truly Indian. We're yeah. like also unapologetically Indian ourselves. Yeah. So we, I think the moment you enter Mask, it is that, you know, you're entering our home. Yeah. And that is the hospitality you get here. Yeah. What's the best part about being in the food business in India? I think this feeling of joy you give to people. Yeah. Like it's, I don't think any other industry <laughs> gives you that. I mean, nothing gives me more joy than food. <laughs> so I totally yeah. get that. Do you eat a lot of your own food at Mask? Like, 
do you get high on your own supply, quote unquote? <laughs> Always. Like I have pictures yeah. and my team keeps taking yeah. pictures of me yeah. getting high on my own supply. Whether yeah. it's walking into mask yeah. kitchen and like I literally go and attack the... The, all the sorbets, like I, I yeah, have, I yeah. love sour things. So I'm always attacking all their sorbets yeah. and, and ice creams. And my new thing is they're all their like petty falls and they're always like, oh my God, Aditi's back. Like <laughs> we're going to be short for diners. So that I'm, I'm always attacking my, and yesterday was caught eating like a whole pizza <laughs> at the pizzeria. So, yeah. and also I'm like, Maybe 25 pounds heavier oh than I God, used to be. Oh my God, that's what I was like. I could never own a food business because I would be huge. Because I love to eat. I'd just be eating all day. I want to see some of this food. Um, I'm so excited today. And you need I to come a, back for... I will come back for a proper experience. But I had a very light breakfast because I was like, I need to be eating over here and save my um, appetite. Skirt is very tight though, so <laughs> I shouldn't eat too much. But I'm super excited. Hi, Chef Varun. Hi, thank you for having me. It's been my dream to always be best friends with a chef or have a chef in the family and I have none of those. Um, my grandmother was an amazing chef but she sadly passed away. So I'm very, very thrilled to be with you and have your food on this table. First, tell me this. How long have you been with Mask? Have you been with Mask since the beginning? Yes, I've been in Mask. I will complete eight years in September. In wow. this September, yes. And it's, how has the experience been? I mean, it's been great. I've almost like kind of grown up. I, when I came here, uh, I joined as like the entry level in the kitchen and not only with age but as a chef also I've from I've literally gone from a cook to a chef from a boy to a man and I've kind of grown up with um, everyone's uh, support here right yeah. and I've kind of grown in this company that's amazing and we'd like to take it much further that also doesn't happen so often that someone stays with a business for yes, so long and that's why yeah. it's not only me but a lot of people in the company and that's why I think that's been our key to success where we've let people grow yeah. we've let them reach their potential and um, the whole team and that's that's kind of been our mantra to success. What's the best part about being a chef? I mean, obviously to follow your passion, most people who become chefs and enter this industry kind of always have wanted to do something like this. Yeah. But especially in my case and in at Mask, you know, the freedom that we get to do uh, what we want to do, we get yeah. to, not, with, not only with the food, but also with the kind of events and things like that we do. Uh, we travel just to find... Um, different ingredients to try different, uh, like try different things, and uh, it's a very exciting. It's you sometimes reach places you wouldn't have just gone for a holiday exactly. or to see, and yeah, just to explore, to kind of celebrate India and getting opportunities like this is the best part of it. Is it easy though, like being a chef in India in, in a fine dining <laughs> restaurant? Is it, is it easy to make it? Because uh, I know that now mm, this is becoming a career for a lot yes, of people, yes, right? Yes, but I yeah. don't think it's easy. Like I said, you know, with just being a chef, you have long hours, you have um, the stress of like not only running it successfully, but taking care of your team. Yeah. Um, plus like ingredients are not like, as readily available as it would be in the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, with Mask, we also focus on Indian ingredients. So to find different ingredients, different dishes that will keep wowing people every three months yeah. is pretty challenging yeah. and it's not yeah. very easy. And I think that's... So uh, you have to be the best of the best to make it. Yep. Which you clearly are. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, this looks amazing. Okay, so what am I eating? I'm going to start with this. Okay. So this is basically our version of um, this dish from Chhattisgarh called Farah. It's actually like Farah. a... Yeah. Okay. It's actually like a dumpling, very pasta-like. Okay. And pasta traditionally, is my favorite food. Yeah. <laughs> traditionally, they would make it, eat it with chutney. Yeah. And it's uh, the dumpling is made with um, fifty percent cooked rice and fifty percent of rice flour. Oh wow. Uh, we kind of um, instead of doing it with chutney, we've kind of paired it with like a wine and butter sauce that would usually be found in like French food. Yeah, wine uh, and butter. So we've kind of, it's like basically Chhattisgarh meets France kind of situation, but modern Indian. Uh, when you taste, there'll be lots of different textures. Um, yes, you'll, you will get like the butter and wine flavor, but it's still very Indian in Oh my, my God. Opinion. It's very comforting. Yes. I think it's the butter. <laughs> and the wine. Yeah, and the wine. And I don't think I would have ever said Chhattisgarh and France in the yes. same sentence. <laughs> I guess that's what you guys are about, yes. you know, saying the these two things together. Mm. I want to ask you this because a lot of Indians and especially people in Bombay because there's, there's a lot of um, Gujaratis and Marwaris who are usually a part of the people who can afford such restaurants. They're vegetarians, yes. a lot of them. So do you really cater to the vegetarian market because it's very big in Bombay? I mean, at Master is we offer a 
vegetarian tasting menu and a non yeah. vegetarian tasting menu yeah. from the very beginning. And Aditi is also part of you're Marwadi, Jain. Yeah, so, so you know is, your group, you know yes. your people, what <laughs> they know want. Yeah. And um, yes, we do. And with prior notice, we can also do like Jain, Keto. We do cater to wow. all the restrictions if we have enough time and notice. Yeah. Uh, and we've, like I said, kind of, we've adapted to Bombay and Bombay is a city where if someone wants something, they want something. And you can't really be like, you know, leave somebody off your group and the rest of y'all come and yeah, I'll feed y'all. Yeah. So, uh, since the beginning, we kind of adapted to this where um, with notice, we kind of delivered any kind, any dietary restrictions. That's a luxury. Yeah, yeah it's the whole point of luxury yes. dining. Yes. You can yes. get what you want to your yes. restrictions. Okay, what else should I try now? I mean, everything so, looks so good. I would definitely want you to try the mask thali. Where I grew up, like I know in Bombay, thali is a big thing. And in a lot of cities, it is. But in my culture, like I'm from UP, right? Yes. So we don't do thalis. We just okay. do a lot of food on the table and everybody eats a lot. I love thali culture Perfect. though. I so love it. That's what we're trying to highlight also. Like for yeah. me, if you want to discover a region and when we travel also, yeah. um, you eat one thali and you almost get a crash course in the local cuisine. Exactly. But with this, because Mask is a Indian restaurant and not just one particular yeah. state, we want kind of the whole country to be represented in the few dishes that we so do. So what is this? What so am I having? This one is one of my favorite restaurants in Bombay called Trishna and I like the I tandoori crab I love Trishna, there. yeah. So I've done a soft shell tandoori crab inspired. Everyone kind of talks about the butter garlic crab. But for me, this is the dish. So, so this, this is inspired guys, by this is that. This the fancy tandoori crab. <laughs> oh, inspired yeah. by Trishna. Uh, then you have lamb mm -hmm. with uh, ambe amti, which is basically a mango curry. With lots of like konkani flavors. Mm. Um, this one is inspired by uh, Bengal and it's like a kasundi and um, mm. poppy seed um, base uh, with ladyfish that's cooked with a Japanese technique of pouring hot oil. So the scales get crispy. So it's almost like eating papad with your fish. Wow. It, this lamb is insane. And you know, I never eat red meat out of my own okay. house because I feel like people can't make it even in restaurants. This is, this this is, is insane. So that is what we do also, right? We have partners and uh, vendors who we've kind of worked with over the years. And like our meats come from specific people. We've kind of seen the right quality, the right gaminess in the meat. And yeah. that, that's what kind of helps. This is the fish, right? Yes. So my brother-in-law is Bengali. Okay. And whenever he goes to Cal, he goes all the time. We're always like making him bring things back for us. <laughs> uh, I'm going to bring him here for this. Let's do it. Yeah. So the, we have a space also called Mask Lab where we have uh, we do a lot of flavor development. Yeah, what is this? Uh, it's basically black garlic pulao. Essentially, you're cooking the garlic for a month at 60 degrees. So the what? sugars kind of caramelize, uh, but it doesn't really burn. It's a common phenomenon in lots of restaurants worldwide, but we kind of make it ourselves at Mask Lab. I could eat this entire thing. <laughs> I could, I'm a, Pe people go, yeah, go, yeah. go through two of them. I'm a carby Barbie. Yeah. Carbs are You should my, definitely yeah. try the bread also. It is these two. Like if I, mm. if I remove it from the menu, even like people will still ask for it. I can't stop eating this. Yum. Guys, I'm so rude. Will you also have? <laughs> <laughs> no, we eat this very no, often. No. You, you have tried the pao. You know, I've never, I've not been such a big fan of pao. Okay. But this one you yeah. will be. Maybe because it's not growing up in Bombay. We're going like, to convert you. Are you going to convert me? Yes. Okay. At least they're cute and small. <laughs> <laughs> what, should, should I dip it in something or just have it plain? Uh, I would try, try it plain. Try but it. also if you want a second bite then mm. dip it. This tastes French. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. So it is, it is a laminated pao. So the idea is <laughs> that basically when you eat, I'm born, like you said, born and brought up in Bombay. You're not, yeah. so you don't, you're not used to pao. For me, pao is life. And usually you cut it in half and uh, you would like kind of put it on a tawa with some butter like how you do pav bhaji. So that's the idea. So instead of doing that, we almost take like a croissant dough where the butter is already inside. It tastes like a croissant. And kind of convert like, it into pav. Yeah, it's like the best mixture of croissant and pav that one could find. So have you I converted? Have this converted you to at least to a mask pav. <laughs> mask pav. I'll come and have the pav and the rice. <laughs> Load up on my carbs. I can just do that also. It's amazing, amazing. Before we leave, I just want to try the cacao thing because you said it was really famous, yes. right? So let's do that and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So this is the dessert. <laughs> and I'm a big chocolate fan, so I'm excited. Okay. What am I eating exactly? So this is, um, is one of our signature desserts. Yeah. It's not only about chocolate, but about cacao. It also celebrates the bean to bar industry in India. Um, you know, when we started Mask in 2016, there was one bean-to-bar company and people didn't know about cacao growing in the country. Yeah. Uh, right now, they're like 
25 that I know of, so I'm sure there are so way too grown. many. So it's grown. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Uh, but cacao was, has been in India since the British. Actually, Cadbury brought it to India oh, while the British was uh, Were there. in India. I didn't yes. know that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so there's basically cacao, uh, the fruit in different layers. So there's a aerated milk chocolate mousse. Uh, there is the fruit, uh, the cacao fruit that's marinated with Gondraj lemon. Uh, there is a chikki that's made with cashew and mm -hmm. cacao nibs. A ch cacao twill and dark chocolate ice cream. So we've kind of tried to use every part of the the cacao fruit and not only the seeds that are usually, this is the broken seed or cacao uh, nibs that are usually converted into chocolate. Every other part that I spoke about is waste from the chocolate making process. Where do you guys see this now? Fine dining in terms of an industry in India and Bombay going from here and where do you see mask in particular going from here? Loosely, the term fine dining is changing worldwide where mm. people, it's not only about, um, you know, perfect service and perfect this. Yeah. It, now it's also becoming more fun. Yeah. Uh, people are taking the liberty to um, not, I wouldn't say keep it casual, but also not keep it very like French, uptight, yeah. bow tie yeah. situation. Yeah. Like that people, has changed. Yes. So that's why when the, mm. it's becoming a more fun experience for the guests as well as the people that mm. are delivering mm. the service mm. and kind of cooking. Um, and also in India, like I said, you know, it's just people are now open to more experiences. So we don't want to only celebrate India within these four walls. Yeah. Uh, we also have lots of programming and experiences planned um, by, by Mask or by other brands that we have outside of our restaurant walls, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the Mask Come Experience, we do a weekend in Rajasthan in January. Oh, I did hear this. So you guys, they do an amazing weekend in January in Rajasthan. Where you do like, it's like a pop-up. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's basically yeah. like... Food, culture, music. Yeah, collaborate with Abhi Manuel Cesar, who's yeah. Yeah. who's the founder of Magnetic Fields. So it's like a music and food. Yeah. I'm not into music me. festivals. Can I just come? It's, 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 it's not music. It's not music. It's not Magnetic Fields. It's more cultural music yeah. and. Oh, like, I love it's cultural music. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then there's the whole dining experience. Yeah. Okay, there's amazing. There's safaris planned. There's like local folk. And like, how many people are um, invited or can sign up for this at one time? About fifty to sixty. Fifty, sixty. So that's not too many. Yes. Yeah. We wanted to be that. more personal. Yeah. Personalized. We want to have like attention given to each. So person. I think this is where I see fine dining going in India. It's beyond the restaurant. How you guys have taken it to experiences. You do pop-ups like how your pop-up yeah. in Rajasthan and yes. Jan with your experiences with different chefs, chefs and collaborations. Yes. And exactly. Basically, like you're right. Fine dining has broken this whole mold of just four walls, and yes. it's changing. The whole culture is changing in India. Exactly. There's so much more. Like so, I think India is now at its most exciting time where food and culture is really blowing up and yeah. like India has that spotlight. So we're in a very exciting moment. Thank you so much guys for having me here and feeding me. I'm taking this to go home with me. I'll eat it the car. <laughs> I don't know what else I should pack also. I'm really exciting. But uh, thank you so much. Oh, so and so we're nice. waiting so nice. looking forward to having yeah. you back here for a full experience. I am coming for a full, full-fledged meal. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.